Hello everybody and welcome to Infantry Outdoors. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'm your host, your favorite disabled DJ. I'm DJ Infantry. So glad to have you here watching the program today. We are talking about King of the Glades and the series that I have been competing in since January of this year. Well guys, it's round six, pre-fishing time, back at Lake Okeechobee. This is a wild card for us. This will determine whether or not we move forward into the classic. Aaron and I got our work cut out for us. Basically, we have to honestly come in the top first, second, or third in order to have enough points and weight to move into the classic. Now, not saying this can't be done, it's been done before, but it kind of lightened the mood a little bit. But one of the things I wanted to start off with, guys, is always acknowledge the sponsors. They spent all of the time and effort getting us here. Lady B with the National Motor Club. You guys hear it each and every episode. It is the longest running, privately owned National Motor Club. Check them out. The benefits that you get outweigh the membership. I promise you that. They keep me and my family safe when we're out on the highways. And in this case, and in this program, I had my family with me, it definitely played key. Don't forget to check out Real Time Baits, realtimebait.com. A lot of cool things coming from Real Time Baits. You guys jump on the website, check it out. And remember that your baits are customizable to your liking. Sarge Creations, banners, decals, stickers, all that good sort of stuff. Check them out today at Sarge Creations. All of my sponsors' information, as always, guys, is linked down below. And if you want to sponsor the program or give a donation, here's one of two ways you can do it. First of all, become a Patreon. Get all those added benefits that Patreons get for just a few dollars a month. Visit patreon.com slash infantry outdoors. Check out our page and decide for yourself. Or you can give us a donation by going to paypal.me forward slash infantry outdoors. Two great ways to support the program and all of your donations goes right back into making this program. So here we are guys, as I said, taking the family. One of the things I wanted to point out as we come to a close in this series, and mind you, this may be the last time we pre-fish. If we don't make it to the classic, this will definitely wrap up the series. But I do want to point out to you, as many of you know, I'm legally blind. And through this challenge and through this whole experience, that has been one of the challenges for me is my uh, limited disability. Now, I can't legally drive a car, so to be able to travel it is very dependent upon someone else driving me, whether it's Aaron or in this case, my family. Now, these are things for, I want you guys to consider as we have been talking through the series and kind of educating you about tournaments and travel tournaments and big tournaments and small tournaments. If there's traveling involved, you got to remember how you're going to get there. First of all, second of all, you know, you have to be able to tow your boat. Third of all, where are you going to stay? In our case, we stayed at Uncle Joe's. Let's take a look at some of the time we spent at Uncle Joe's. All right guys, so we made it to Uncle Joe's. A little later in the afternoon, but we're here. Uncle Joe's campground, we've been here before. Great place to stay guys, it's off the beaten path. And uh, we enjoy staying here, so let me get you guys out of the sun. So I hope you guys check them out, Uncle Joe's campground and motel. They've got RV parking, they got these little cabins, they got the campground. So we're here, we're at the campgrounds. I'm gonna give you a spam behind me. I'm actually gonna take you down to the lake, I think. But look at the sunset behind me. Look, can I get it? Can I get it? Look at that sunset. My big head out the way. So yeah, travel vlog has been real difficult, but tomorrow starts pre-fishing. It's round five, King of the Glades. This is a wild card. We basically gotta get first, second, or third tomorrow. So live stream starts at 10. If you guys missed the live stream, I'll put it right here in the card above. You can rewatch it later. And of course, remember to check out all the sponsors of people that got us here, Sarge Creations, Real Time Bait, National Motor Club, everybody that put their two cents in and their, their foot forward and got us to this point. So, a lot of fun gonna be tomorrow, uh, out on the water. It's a beautiful day. I'm gonna try to get you guys some of this moon footage a little bit later, break out the telephoto lens. But in the meantime, let's go down to the water. I hear there's a big alligator over there. So, maybe we'll go play with him, tickle his belly or something. So, stay tuned. It's a really cool place. If you guys happen to be in the Kissimmee area, check them out. Really nice people. We stayed there throughout the whole tournament season and I'll be back again this year. Thanks Uncle Joe's. Now another thing to consider is the expense of driving up there. Your gas that you put into your truck. 
you know, all of us have to drive from point A to point B. In my case, it was from uh, where I am in Broward County up until Clewiston, which is about an hour and a half drive. Um, but the amount of gas that you have to put in your car to get there, uh, to get back, are there tolls on the road? Remember that the tolls are more if you're pulling a boat than if you're just driving your vehicle. So these are things to consider that in your travels, in my case, how am I gonna get there when I am unable to drive? Thankfully, Aaron is a licensed driver with the truck that was able to pull the boat. So when we did go up to Clewiston, if I didn't take my family, Aaron was happy to take the boat. But in this case, in this episode, I took the family, went to Uncle Joe's. We even had the in-laws come down. My wife's father came down with his new wife to see the kids, the wife, and everything else, and enjoy this some time at Uncle Joe's. And I gotta say, not even there five minutes, and look what happened. Brandon does what? Daddy, he's running into me. My son got a bass. We're not even here 15 minutes. Can you look in that screen and see if I'm in it? Okay. Oh, sweet. Yeah, he's running it over to you. He's right here, buddy. Daddy. Yeah. Hot uh, dog, when you get him on. Um, Grandpa, let me use the worm. Not even here for five minutes. And the son catches it on the Mondo worm, the Guggen Bates Mondo worm. One of the key things to getting up to a location like Uncle Joe's when it's an away tournament is pre-fishing, guys. And I always preach this in all of the episodes that you have seen in all of the series, is pre-fishing. Getting there a day early gave me the opportunity to get my boat ready, to set up my tackle, to get things right in my head. What baits do I want to throw? Um, what, what am I thinking? What is going on at the lake? What do I see at the lake? Because mind you, I'm just getting there, so I haven't been out on the water. I've only seen it from the road. The day before pre-fishing is almost as important as pre-fishing itself, in my opinion, because it gives you the opportunity to get your rods together, your reels together, make sure everything's in the boat where you want it to be. Um, just those last minute details, all before you even go out to pre-fish. And mind you, that the scenery and the time spent with family was a really great, great thing um, to be able to do and for my wife to be able to see her dad and spend that time was even better well let's get what we're all here for let's talk pre-fishing so we here we go again back on lake okeechobee guys and aaron and i is something about this lake man i don't know if it's just we're bad luck or we're having bad luck or this is a bad year to to be able to out be out on okeechobee but let's recap. <laughs> January, we struck out because it was freezing cold here in Florida. And I mean, freezing cold for Florida, period. Then the second time we went out, it was actually decent. We turned in fish, we did pretty good. This time coming into pre-fishing, it was very, very hot. Not to mention Aaron and I, we're kind of going into this kind of with a laid back attitude being that, again, if we don't come in first, second or third, well, that, that's the end of the season for us. Rather than going pressured for a win, we kind of went in with a, hey, let's check out parts of the lake we haven't done and let's explore and see things that we haven't seen in the last two times that we were here and just try to figure it out. But what we didn't know is the lake at its deepest point was 11.3 feet. This is a giant lake, ladies and gentlemen. Lake Okeechobee is massive. So for it to only be 11.3 feet deep at its deepest point means that it's going to be a lot of shallow water fishing and that also makes for a very dangerous lake this is already a lake that transitions from 16 17 18 foot to three feet that fast there are channel markers in this lake to indicate you where to go so that you don't run into those depth variations so it kind of put us on edge a little bit being that the lake was that low I mean, it was really low. We could see the boulders, we could see the rocks on the side that we couldn't see the last two times we were there. Um, and you'll see here, as we go through the footage, I was actually able to see fish beds, which to me was amazing because one of my curious things with my vision is, how do I bed fish if I can't see the bed? Well, this place was so, uh, so low, I had no problems seeing the fish beds. Well, let's get out on the water. Let's take a look. It wasn't really a great day of pre-fishing, so let's see what happens. Hope you guys enjoy. I'll talk to you when we get back after the water. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Pre-Fishing Lake Okeechobee. Yours truly, the infantry with you. Good morning, wherever you are around the world. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. 
We are out on the water, rough start to the start of the day. Got a little late start, but we are moving and grooving now. Uh, out here on the Rim Canal, up north end this time. Going to be streaming live a little bit later for those that uh, are subscribed. And if you aren't subscribed, well, you're missing out. So hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification so that you're notified every time we put out a video here on Infantry Outdoors. So guys, we are here. This is round six for us. King of the Glades series pre-fishing Saturday afternoon. Water temperature is about 83 degrees in Florida. Can you guys believe that up north? 83. It's going to be... Real field temperature today of 92. <laughs> and it's not even summer yet. Holy crap. Um, Aaron, what's going on, brother? You're running the trolling motor. First thought, oh, let me flip the camera. First thought for today, dude. First thought for today. No storms that I can see. That's a good sign. There's a little more cloud cover. Especially with this top water. But I like it. A lot less wind than I'm used to here. So yeah. So we're actually going to keep you guys updated throughout the day. I'm going to try to do a better job. I promised you guys in the last video, but I explained filming. It's tough when we're doing this tournament stuff because we have to concentrate on the tournament as well as concentrate on you guys as well. So stay tuned with us. Hit that thumbs up button. Make sure that you're subscribed. And if you guys got any comments, drop them below. And don't forget, you can always write to me at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. So I'm gonna get on here, get on the graph, get us ready, get us loaded up, start fishing, and see if we can't put five in the box. You guys watching at home, still no fish yet. Slow day. Trying out new stuff. A little crazy. Out. A lot of the day fishing and not catching. Yeah, buddy. Hot dog. If it's got two eyes and a tail, fix. I don't see anything up here but beach. Ooh. Oh! That went to the real quick. Okay, so this is supposed to be a fucking channel. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be a good one. Oh, that hurt. That's good. Look at it.
Infantry Outdoors is sponsored in part by RealtimeBait.com, 100% customizable soft plastics made your way. Shop today at RealtimeBait.com. Lady B with the National Motor Club. Drive protected, drive with the Motor Club. Sarge Creations, custom vinyl, decals, banners, and more. And buy donations from viewers like you. Well, welcome back from the water, everybody. My apologies for a day that wasn't exactly the most eventful. But again, one of the things I've been struggling with with this series, and if any of you YouTubers can comment on this, please do below. The struggle's really been to be able to film and focus on the tournament itself. Now, I'm by far a professional fisherman or a professional filmmaker. I'm a creator just like you. But I have things set up to where I think they're pretty good. We have four cameras on the boat, one on each angler and two facing each direction of the boat to try to give you guys the best action that I can throughout the tournament series. Now, as the series has gone on, I have to honestly say, I've kind of gotten a little lapse in how I film because it really is a challenge. I kind of have to focus more on the fishing, on the mapping, on the things that I have to focus and having a camera really it, it's been a tough thing i hope you guys really have enjoyed the way that i've presented this to you because again it's been a real challenge now in this case particular there really wasn't much to film it was a very slow day it was a lot of driving as you've seen a lot of looking for spots and um just trying to navigate new water now the whole game plan with our prefish was trying to come up with strategy for the tournament day lake okeechobee's kicked us in the balls this whole entire year um, and Aaron and I just really tried to make the best of it. Now, as you've seen, the water depth was a real, real factor for us. We even managed to hit a boulder in the middle of a channel marker, a marked designated channel for boats to pass through. So that just goes to show you how dangerous Lake Okeechobee is and that if you guys ever do get the opportunity to come down here, just be careful. Lake Okeechobee is its own monster, but then again, it's so beautiful and it has so many treasures within it that you just have to experience once in your life guys i hope you've enjoyed this if you have give us a thumbs up remember if you're not subscribed by now hit the subscribe button we've got a lot more coming out for you ring that bell so that you're notified each and every time that we put out a video and if you are subscribed make sure the bell is still run guys drop a comment on anything you like to see and if you are a creator like me and a fisherman or outdoorsman in general how do you find your challenge of filming yourself, especially in a situation like me, where I'm fishing a tournament? And if you're a tournament fisherman, please comment below on any tips or tricks you might have for me in the future. You can always write to us at infantryoutdoors at yahoo.com. Drop a comment below, guys. And uh, by the way, if you want to help out the program, here's another way. Everything that we use in the programs is always linked below through Amazon links. We're Amazon affiliates, guys. So if you, rods, reels, camera, editing equipment, everything we use is always in the link below. So click on the link, head on over to Amazon, and we'll receive a small finder's fee from Amazon just by you making a purchase, and you'll get no additional charge. Well, gang, I'm going to go. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if you did, remember to give us a thumbs up on it. Don't forget to drop comments. Well, we'll have to see what tomorrow brings. Round six, King of the Glades tournament series. This may be our last round for me and Aaron. So wish us luck, guys. We'll see what tomorrow holds. And I hope this and all of my adventures inspires you to get outdoors. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.